Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh by Shem El Shai, by Shem Rakat Badash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that do this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners, and to the aquath that are listening and learning. To you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, profiling, uh, this is John Williams again. The name of this video is California Has Fallen. I watched a couple of his videos today. He also did one called The Collapse of America in Europe. Um, things aren't looking good. All right. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me just open with this scripture. This is Ezekiel 27, 27, and it says, Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners, thy pilots, thy caulkers, thy occupiers of thy merchandise, and all thy men of war that are in thee, and in all thy company, which is in the midst of thee, shall fail in the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. And America is ruined. The rulership of the so-called white man is ruined. He's ushering in his NWO, his uh, MO, the MOTB going digital, and this whole system is collapsing, um, which what they wanted it to collapse. All right, and is you know the more the more you begin to understand um, the whole American experience experiment was was all for purposeful obsolescence in the first place. So without any further ado, California has fallen. The exodus has just begun begun that's the name of this uh this video all right you can matter of fact you can see the name in the corner there so let's uh let john speak for a few minutes and we'll just bring in some, you know some scriptures as john here california is seeing a massive exodus it's not just california chicago as well new york city and where are they going they're going to texas they're going to florida you know they're leaving they're leaving in droves and it's pretty fascinating to me to really look at the details look at the data as to why that is you know, I personally, I lived in California since 2006. I loved California. But ever since, you know, like 2012, it just started getting more and more and more challenging. You know, of course, probably in the 80s and 70s, it was much better. But from my experience, 2012 onward just got more challenging. But especially the last two years, it's unreal. We're seeing all these businesses leave. We're seeing all this opportunity leave. And I actually think that's what they want. And I think that they want that for one very specific reason. LA sheds 1% of the population during the pandemic era. The population of LA has fallen by 1% during the pandemic as some residents left for cheaper homes with more space for remote work. The drop mirrors other big cities' declines in the year that ended in July 1, 2021, Wall Street Journal reported. Collectively, in the nine cities with more than 1 million people, the population fell 1.7%, a loss of 419,000 residents. Only two cities grew. Phoenix and San Antonio. And I, I believe that they're growing because those locations, they probably offered, a lot of people would agree, a better lifestyle. Maybe a little bit more in line with the beliefs of people that were in California. Like, you know what? I love California, but I don't love it this much. You know, I'm not going to sacrifice everything for it. I'm going to go to places a little more affordable, a little aligned with my beliefs, no income tax, very business friendly offer a better lifestyle for my family, I'm going to go there. And I think that actually had a massive, massive contribution to this. And I think it's only just most likely going to be the start of this. I think we're going to see more and more and more people if California uh, continues down the direction that they're going in and Texas stays strong how they're handling things. New York. The One thing I know is that the people in Texas are not very happy about these Californians that are coming there. Neither are the people in Colorado or any of the neighboring states. And you best believe all those people in the uh, in the Upper East, uh, uh, Northeast part of the country are not happy about all the New Yorkers that are coming in. Because what happens when people with money, with lots of money come into new areas, they bring, uh, uh, basically they make everyone else cost of living go up. It's not the fact that you that you came in and you you actually made my my property, uh, you know, value go up. They, they make everything, they, they make every the cost of living go up. That's what happens. And and then, you know, and people just don't then they bring their ideas and, and all their, you know, the alphabet lifestyle and all them weird California ways, man. So the people just don't like them. All right. And then you just mix in more red with blue, which causes more things, you know, problems. And another thing is, is that 
look at America like a body, all right? Cities that are deteriorating and neighborhoods that are that are deteriorating, eventually it will affect the whole body. All right. If you got cancer, okay, you know you just can't move. If there's a if there's a cancer, all right. If one state represents cancer, that would be California. You just can't move to Texas or New York. I mean, you know, or away from Chicago or away from New York. All these cancerous places to a better part of the same body, all right? You know, the, you, it just, it, you see, it makes no sense. It's just like this left and, and this right thing, you know, uh, you got to understand that the wings are, 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 are still attached to the same hateful, wicked bird, all right? This is, uh, and so it's really making no sense for these people to do it. It's basically, it's a temporary fix, all right? Or it does not fix anything. This is Jeremiah 49, and seven, and it reads, Concerning Edom, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Yeah, vanished. So, uh, you know, they really look stupid with a lot of things that they're doing. You know, they're, they're, they're gradualism, they're moving too fast, they're making mistakes, they're leaving holes. Is getting When they do stuff, it gets picked apart on the, on the internet the very same within hours. We you know when they have these uh these events where you have different uh, mass shootings and big major events and and you know with literally within hours you know the uh the after the story the official story comes out the evidence starts pouring in is usually usually opposite or different from what the official story is you know that's what I'm saying all right but uh, verse verse eight flee ye turn back dwell deep O inhabitants of Dedan. It says, uh, Slovakia. Uh, flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon you the time that I will visit him. All right? And that's pretty much what's happening. You know, the calamities are, uh, are upon Esau, Edom. You know, their birth rates are low. You know, they're losing their homes, their health and their wealth, their property, their, their status. You know, homelessness is growing in every almost every city, especially in, um, in, in people are migrating to the warmer places, climates. A lot of homelessness. Uh, I was listening to a, a video with Elder Yashawamba, and he was talking about the homelessness that, that are literally at the gates of, uh, of the Disney and how homeless encampments are all in the wooded areas, you know, uh, surrounding and all, and, and you know, and all up and down in the hotels and the things that that are on the strip that that lead up to a uh, uh, Disney World, which was you know a make believe world of happiness and you know the good old American story. <laughs> you know, there's there's lots of children in, in in America that never even get to go to Disney World. Then there's more kids than in that. You then you got a population of children that've been there for them every birthday, every every year of their life. You know, hell, I know a little kid and she's. She's been to Disney, Disney World, Disneyland, and the one in, I think there's one in Hawaii. I believe she's been to that one too. And it's something that she's done every year. But then you got kids that's, that's never even been to a theme park. You know, most of the, most, the closest they get to a theme park is when the carnival comes, you know, near the neighborhood. So, so the basically what I'm saying is that there's a serious uh, imbalance in, in, in America, you know, and these people are not fit to rule. They just aren't. It's all falling apart. Let's listen to John a little bit more. The nation's largest city lost 3.5% of its residents, or about 305,000 people. The 1% did for LA. The second largest city came to 41,000 people. The population of the third largest city, Chicago, fell by 45,000 people, about 1.6%. Nor was the population drop felt more than San Fran and other Bay Area cities which generally led... When they say largest, third largest, they really mean by population and people. The land, the, the actual city limits of Chicago is bigger than L.A. L.A. just has more people because it's so spread out, you know, all the different. But for actual city, Chicago is a bigger city. The pack and the percentage of residents who left town. Now, I think people left San Francisco for a couple reasons. San Francisco is a beautiful place, at least it was a few years ago. Now, crime is through the roof. They've reduced the penalties for crime to a level to where it almost incentivizes <laughs> bad behavior. 
Rents are through the roof. Everything is very, very expensive, and it's not a business-friendly climate. Population fell 6.3% during the pandemic, the most of any U.S. city, according to the latest Census Bureau. The Bay City... And see, the Bay in, in San Francisco it literally was, you know, one of the most beautiful cities in, in America. You know, I I, I was uh, I lived in, in Northern California, in the Bay Area, for... For almost ten years, you know, uh, after after I got out the Marine Corps, I I, I kind of you know I got out when I got got out off active duty, you know I was living I was living in the Bay Area and I stayed for a while, you know, and before I came back to Chicago, and um and California was was amazing, you know back then, and it still was super expensive, but it's uh, you know I haven't been back because I, I uh, last place I lived was in uh was Hayward. You know, I lived in San Francisco for a while, but I lived in Hayward, which is a suburb uh, of Oakland, you know, about a, about 45 minutes uh, uh, south of, uh, of Oakland. And from what I hear, what Hayward looks like, you know, it's like a drug infection. It's just as bad as San Francisco. It's not worse, you know. So it's homelessness all up and down the Bay, all throughout California. And um, people sleeping in their cars and in parking lots and encampments, you know. This is a uh, this is Ezekiel 27 us uh, back in Ezekiel 27 I'm going to go to jump to verse 33 and 34 and it says and when thy wares went forth out of the seas thou fillest many people thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise and see America got rich uh, um you know and you you know through it through his merchandising through his import and his export, you know, and now and in of recent, like the last forty years, has been mostly importing. So people in the import business, retail businesses, are the people who've really been making money. You know, America, you know, collectively, don't there's not a lot of things made in America that sold around the world. You know, it just isn't. And it says, uh, and in the time when thou shalt be broken. By the seas and the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of these shall fail. So, you know, now China is the major producer of everything, and America is a producer of nothing. China is ahead with the with the digital thing, you know, with the MOTB and China's China's ahead, and the and as the ruble is becoming the uh, the Russian ruble is is literally on its way to becoming the world uh, uh, and and the Chinese yuan. Uh, the world's dominant uh, currency, where America, uh, you know, the greenback isn't 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 doesn't have that status anymore. It's actually lost that status. It's not losing it. It has lost it. All right. And there are lots of things that are headed this way to 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 America, and it does not look good. I mean, you're looking at you got the wheat thing, which is going to kick in. You're going to be out of wheat, so that's half of your foods and processed foods. And I, if you and anyone is going in the stores can see how empty the shelves are getting. You know, there's a certain uh, health bar that I like to get and keep a couple in my bag for what you know, because when I'm on the move, so I can you know do a meal replacement or anything. Because you really got to stay away from processed food, but this is one of the better ones, and it's one of those Lara bars. And a, and the, and a couple that I like the most, clearly that's the one that most people like, and it's hard to find them that particular bar. You know. All, all the ones that taste horrible, they're they're still there. But the ones that taste really good, man, they're, they're you know. But, uh, yeah, so a lot of things, a lot of different foods are made with that, right? And then you got all kind of, you got uh, uh, you got the housing crash. You got a, a car loan thing. Uh, most people aren't making the payments on their car, so you got a problem with that. You know, uh, a lot of people are going to be kicked out of their apartments. A lot of people are going to lose their homes. A lot of people can't pay child support. They can't. They just. They just don't have it, and it's just looking bad. And, and you're looking at rolling blackouts, you know, in in, in during the summer months. And you listen, looking at a possible collapse, uh, but you know, by the end of the summer, going into the fall. You know, this next this next couple month, next couple of weeks actually, because, well, we will probably July June will probably be. Uh, you know, somewhat regular chaos that we already experiencing. But by the time we get to like the middle end of July going into August, just just be prepared, man. You know, and all, and all these uh, um, all these experts, all these uh, financial experts 
and all these preppers, they're all pretty much saying the same thing, man. And then, uh, you know, and, and at the who, the W A, uh, the, uh, the, the, the W E F and the, and the who, what's her name? Doctor. Let me see if I can, uh, find that. What is her name? Dr. Pippa Malgren. She just came right out in uh, Dr. Pippa Malgren. And she came right out and said that, you know, it's, it's time to get rid of the cash. Cash has to die now. And they're just going. So they're getting ready to, you know, do their enterprise. But it's all going to fail, man. Because the scriptures clearly say when they're about to fill their belly, certain destruction will come. But yeah, but Dr. Uh, Pippa Malgren, she just came out. So they're getting ready to go digital. And go toward, you know, the whole thing that, that, that goes in, uh, you know, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. It's about to come to life, man. And, and a lot of people about to suffer. All right. But that also means that the Lord is that much closer to coming. Because when they when they set that up, you know, when they set that up, the Lord is going to come. All right. So as soon as so as soon as they get it set up and get it up and going, that's when all, 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 well, all hell is, is will probably break loose. Before then, but it's really gonna go nuts at that time. But this is a uh, let's revel. Let's get one more scripture and, and uh, get ready to close. Let me, actually, let me let John speak a few more minutes. Lost nearly fifty-five thousand people as residents bailed out for remote work. Now, what's fascinating here is these protocols and how this all kind of comes together. So right now, they have seven hundred forty thousand California seven hundred forty thousand renters in California that are behind on rent. And wow. This is See? Uh, March 22nd. So about the, about two months ago. Right? 740,000 people are not paying rent because of eviction moratoriums. It's a very friendly location. So he said that was, you know, in March. So it, we're in June rent. now. So or, um, you know, tomorrow's kind of June 1st. Society because they're offering all of these different type of uh, protocols. Like, for example, this universal basic income, they're now offering $1,000 a month for high school seniors experiencing wow. homelessness. Wow. Buy a house with no money down. Fucking if that easy. sounds too good to be true, that might be because nobody ever explained to you. Yeah, exactly shut the how hell. He's worked. telling you how oh, man he now, was red as hell. I'm sure they're all <laughs> Actually I'm glad he did show up. They go to, <laughs> they go to show you that there's no such thing as white people, man. They truly are the Edomites. You know, and the first came out red all over. Because I hadn't looked at them. I was just trying to look for the button to click it off when I looked up at them, man. We that was Esau for real right there, boy. But, but uh, go ahead, John. There are high school seniors that are experiencing homelessness. I'm sure it's not uh, rare, but you know, at least to my knowledge, I don't really know anyone that went to high school that didn't have a home. Right? Most people that go to high school, they have to use an address. Times have changed. Somewhere. They generally have a mother, a father, a caretaker, someone to help them. I would say 99 <laughs> times out of 100. Right? But when you're giving a a high school senior a thousand dollars a month you're basically you're giving them uh incentive to not contribute to not let me tell you man a thousand dollar months is going to go nowhere especially in california they got the highest gas in the country all right the highest cost of living in the country all right so you know this place is done it's finished this is revelation 18 and 10 and um, because this is what's about to happen, because, you know, uh, the third woe, which is World War Three, is at hand. And that's going to be the end result of all of this. All this failed policy is leading up to World War Three. All right. So this is Revelation 18 and 10. And it reads, standing afar off for the fear of their torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. So it's literally going to take the Lord only one hour to completely annihilate this place. And if that's an hour in, in heavenly time, you know, it's probably even faster than, because you got to think if a, if, if a thousand years to us is only one day to the Lord, then, you know, I'm no mathematician. Figure out what an hour is. So the chariots and the Yahawashai and, and the chariots, the technology of the chariots, the heavenly technology is, is going to be that, wow, it's going to be that powerful, that, 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 uh, you know, that destruction, devastating power that the world has never seen, man. It's going to be something out, out of a movie, just way worse, right? And it says, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore, because nobody's ever going to make money with this place ever again. 
the merchandise of gold, silver, and precious stones, and pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all uh, dyeing wood, and all matter of vessels of ivory, and matter of vessels, most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, fine flour, and wheat, and beast, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. See, slaves are a commodity. And yes, they're going to be slaves in the kingdom of heaven. All right? The Lord promises that the elites of Esau Edom are going to be the first fruits of slavery. All right? Their first job is going to be to bury all those bodies. Okay? But uh, let me keep reading. It says, And the fruits uh, thy souls lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty, and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. So your favorite snacks and, you know, your favorite chocolates, you know, uh, your favorite brand of cigarettes, <laughs> no more. It says, uh, as a matter of fact, in, in the world to come, there ain't going to be nobody smoking. Smoking is going to be done away with. All right. And it says, and the merchants of, and the merchants of, of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed with linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great the riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster, shipmasters are already looking confounded now because all them ships are just floating on the sea and nothing is really moving, all right? And every shipmaster and every uh, company and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? All right. And, and, and you know, in America is one gigantic city. The city went un, you know, with, uh, uh, without, without walls. It's talking about Babylon the Great, which is, which is a place where Edom, Esau, Edom rule, rules. But they was, shall rule no more. Their time and their rule is coming to an end. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Wa ababa ba ba kwam yasharala shalom.